And we're live. Here's an interesting question. I've been thinking about a lot of events for me. Have you ever had your fight or flight reflex activated? If so, which way did you go? Fight or flight? And um, <clears throat> I, I've had a couple incidents. Now, most of them I've talked about before, right? Like um, uh, the burglar that robbed my house all those times. When I finally caught him in the act, I you know, confronted him. I hit the door on his fingers and yelled at the guy and chased him away. And but that was real like brave. Um, there've been a couple other instances too, like, especially with like, like ocean rescues and stuff where I, uh, I, I felt like I acted pretty bravely, but I've had a couple others. Like, um, I remember I talked about a fight where that guy broke my nose, that Yorgi guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's weird. He, he broke my nose. I've had it broken four times. I count this one as twice because it broke two places. But um, that night anyway, it was my off button. And uh, like as soon as he hit me, I didn't want to fight anymore. But like I, I was really taken aback by how much blood I was bleeding. And uh, I felt like guilt over it for a while. Like I was some kind of coward. Like, you know, you watch guys fight through bloody noses all the time and it on this one day, it totally took the fight out of me. Um, yeah. I've had two instances, uh, once on a motorcycle, like a long time ago in my twenties or something where I, for some reason, I guess I thought I wasn't going to make the turn. So I just hit the brakes really hard and, uh, I ended up stopping in time and I think I would have made the turn if I just piloted it better. But, um, I reacted the wrong way. Like I wasn't the cool, calm, collected, best version of me. I was in the red. And then there was another time I had my paramotor when I was first learning and the motor went out and, uh, had my, it was, I was so early. My instructor was still, you know, in the radio and had he not like said, you know, okay, this is going to be fine. You're lined up on the runway, you know, go flare. And, uh, like, had he not been in my ear talking me through it, I, I might've just, froze i don't know and just glided to the ground and smashed or something like so i feel like with people and like if there's any time i've i've been the real brave perfect version of me it also but, depends what it is right like like courage uh, by definition is when you're overcoming fear like you have to be terrified to be courageous like if you're if you're just not afraid then it wasn't that courageous you mm -hmm. know like yeah. like like and, and that's I, why I, superman's I, never <coughs> been courageous Sure. Right. And, and when I think about you, frankly, when you go out there and save the people uh, who are drowning or whatever, like you don't have any fear. You have excitement. You're like, ooh, I get to go do my thing. Right. This uh, is what I do. Yeah. So you're not afraid. So so there's no flight or fight reaction. Like what I've always experienced is if it's something like hanging out of a helicopter or like going down a really steep slide or like swinging from a rope or being in a vehicle uh, that someone else is piloting and like I really am not afraid of that. Um, or at least I'm able to master that fear and just and basically what I do is I say, look, being afraid of this will change the outcome in no way other than negatively. Your my fear here can only hinder me if I'm if I focus and just try to make the best of this out of control down a hill in a thing situation, then I might make it out of it. But if but but the worst thing I can do is panic and be be terrified and like freak out because then I lose control. Um, but if it's a different kind of scenario. I, I'm not I'm not getting a fight or flight reaction from those things is what I'm saying. But if it's something that's like major issues that are like real world life changing issues or if I have like all, like I've had a lot of altercations, I, I, I go I have a panic attack. I fucking have a panic attack. I, I, I go unconscious. I don't hyperventilate first. Everything just it's like when you stand up too quickly. Uh, and, and, you know, you see stars for a moment, it's like that, but it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. It start, it, it, I can feel it wash over me from, from top to bottom. There's a cold sweat. And then that, that immediately like burns off into a fever. And then I feel cold and tingly at all of my extremities and my hands and my legs. Things start getting dark from the outside growing in. It's it the peripheral. It starts getting foggy. How many times has this happened to you? Oh, bunches of times. I have lots of panic attacks. Not 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 recently. Um, I've had them before and like passed out outside on on concrete and like fucked my elbow. Have you before. ever taken anything for it? Um, well, it's not something that happens regularly enough to like, you know, to 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 deal with. It's 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 yeah. literally like fight or flight uh, type situations that trigger it. It's not like Tony Soprano. I'm seeing the Uncle Ben's rice and I'm like, oh, and like like falling out on the floor with the cold cuts. It's that like if something major happens, if I think that like 
everything's melting down or like I'm about, even if I'm, if I'm about to get in a fight, maybe even then I will, I will completely have a panic attack. I need, I, if, and if I don't sit down, I'm going to fall down and it's not going to be one hmm. of those, like let yourself down to the floor slowly with like one leg and be like, Oh, I just need to sit here for a minute. I don't feel too good. It's like, I'm blind now. I'm blind now. Where am I? Three, two, unconscious. That's how it goes. So like as soon you as you are I exactly feeling, like these fainting goats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where I'm you exactly get startled like goat. and then like if you scream at them, they just faint. Just bad they just fall over. Next, <laughs> that and I've next also PKA had to hangout like, or something. Like, I'm gonna open an umbrella at Kyle. <laughs> just <laughs> see it. <laughs> just to disorient him. Man, that sounds odd. You know, I've like, never like, experienced anything like that <clears throat> of just passing out for no uh, I've never had that happen. I can think of four off the top of my head. Like like, hmm. like it happened at court wow. that time when I was like when I had the uh the the open weapon charge when I was twenty twenty two or whatever. And uh, the judge is talking about sending us to prison and fining us tens of thousands of dollars. And we're in the right. We had carry permits. We weren't doing anything illegal. We were just open carrying in a Walmart, permitted to do so, the whole nine yard. And this judge doesn't know the goddamn law because, like, the level of judge he's at, probate judge or whatever, he didn't even go to law school. He's, a, he's like an elected official, you know? Mm. And, he, and, I, and I'm like, I've got all these printouts. Like, 22-year version of me is coming in there like a matlock. Like, like, no, nah, we don't need a lawyer. I got this handled. Like, like, I'll just explain to him, hey, we don't need a lawyer. We don't need. I, that's what I told him. I'm like, we don't need a lawyer. I was like, I'll take care of this. <laughs> and we get in there, and I'm like, and and I'm like, I'm like, no, sir, you, your honor, you see here, like, this is where the the district, um, the um, uh, attorney general of Georgia, you know, here's a quote from him from two years ago where he talks about grocery stores being permissible. Like, how does Walmart not fall in with a grocery store? Like, like same fucking thing. It's, it is a grocery store. And he's just like, oh, well, that don't count there and this and that. And I'm like, would you read this paragraph? And I could tell he didn't want to read it out loud. And I noticed it. I was like, because there's a recorder over there recording everything down. And there's like multiple people up on the bench. Like, he's not even like alone up there. I'm defending myself before four of these people. And like, they're assisting him and handing him documents and like whispering in his ear and stuff. It's outrageous, and I'm just getting more and more stressed, and I'm scared. I'm terrified because it's not going my way. It's like he's being resistant to all this. He, he won't hear my 22-year-old version of this. This 60-, 70-year-old judge is not hearing it. And I just go on and on and with all this proof, and finally, I'm like, can I, can I get some water? I'm like, my throat is so dry. And they're, they go, we don't have any water. 30 seconds later, I'm unconscious, and there's a deputy on one side, like, holding my belt and my shoulder, and my cousin is on the other side with a belt and a shoulder, and they're hoisting me out of the fucking courtroom <laughs> into the back, like, alley area, like, behind the, like, the judge's chambers. Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the judge's chambers, like, like, uh, all of a sudden, there's Hostess snack cakes and Coca-Cola on ice. Like they're pouring it for me. I'm just like, well, all of a sudden we came up with some some fucking beverages. I <laughs> Someone had a hidden snack machine and they didn't want anybody to know about. I'm like, so I <clears throat> immediately, because that's the nature of this every single time. There's nothing wrong with me. My body just flipped its, you know, oh, it switched. It's like, oh, voltage too high. We're we're fucking reset mode. I flipped a breaker. That's what it's like. I flipped my breaker. And uh, and my body's like, oh, reboot. It just turns the breaker back on, and I'm just like, oh, instantly better. And so I'm like, what's what's happening? And they're like, the judge said he needs to look at that paperwork you brought, and he needs to think about this some more and ask some second opinion. So my my brain goes, oh, we're good. Thank God we won. Um, and they go, and the ambulance is on the way. And I'm like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> and we got the fuck out of there as quickly as we could. And be very embarrassed. Um, got in my car and we're like driving away as the ambulance is coming in like a bat out of hell. Like, woo -hoo! Like, like pulls in two paramedics are running into the courtroom and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> get out of here, get out of are here, you, man. Like this was no talking I, about the fight or flight response thing because I've got a good one that's more funny than anything. I don't remember if I've talked about it, but it, it's not strictly fight or flight. But it's uh, so my girlfriend in high school, we were on a vacation with my family. She just came along to the Dominican Republic. And we we're hanging out on the beach, obviously, and getting swindled by the fucking Dominicans who, you know, I'm walking down the street, you know, 16, 17, whatever, with my wa American wallet. And they're like, hey, you want to buy this coconut? For I think I bought a coconut from this large Dominican guy for like six bucks. There were dozens of coconuts laying around, but he was accosting us. And he's like, six dollars for these coconuts. And it's like, dude, if you don't, like, fine, dude, like, take the six bucks, like, let me go. 
Like you're gonna stab me, and I'm not confident enough to hold my own when there's I'm I'm the only tourist in this region right now. And they also had boats, the little canoes that you could take out there and paddle around. Obviously not regulated, just some fucking dude's canoe. And we rented it because my girlfriend at the time wanted to go out and do it. And I was already getting stressed out because I'm the complete opposite of Woody when it comes to the ocean. The thought of just swimming out to sea for the fuck of it, just to see how far you can go, that makes my palms sweat. Like I, I'm so freaked out by the ocean of what could be there, like what the, the sneaky, whatever the fuck. Like I don't know, it freaks me out. And we were in there, we were paddling out, and I kept trying to like hold it in to the point where it was embarrassing. Where like I'd be like, all right, that's 30 yards out, getting pretty far, right? Like, all right, let's let's rein it in and take in the sights. And she was like, no, we need to keep going out. Let's keep going out. And I didn't want to look like a bitch. And so I just kept paddling out there, spending more time with my head behind me, like, oh my God, it's getting so far away. Like the land is so like, because my only thought is like, if something happens and I have to swim back, there is so much time for a monster to to seize me or for something to <laughs> grab me from under the depths because I can't see. Yeah. And I'm a fine swimmer. I'm confident in my swimming. I'm fine with that. Just the, the unknown. And we got out there to a point where I started to get like actual like sweaty and scared. And like she was trying to be like upbeat. She was just enjoying herself. Like, oh, this is so much fun. We're seeing all this fun stuff. What a neat place. Beautiful weather. And I'm like white knuckling this fucking three dollar half broken oar. Like, can we go back? Can we go back? And she's like, no, we got to keep going. So I went a little bit further and she started to rock the boat being cute with me cute and i lost my shit i ruined that canoe trip <laughs> for, for her at that point because it wasn't like hey settle down you're gonna dox in the water it was like what the fuck do you think you're doing out here? <laughs> stop stop fucking rocking the boat we're going back we're going back right give me your oar no you're not gonna fight me on this give me your fucking oar we're going back this is ridiculous this is ridiculous there's a pool at the hotel and there's no sharks in the pool and <laughs> you just keep going oh like it, it was such a stupid thing to get so anxious over and like so stressed out. But like it, it was just like something I couldn't overcome of like being out there. It wasn't like I chose to get upset. It was just like that switch, I guess, instead of me passing out and drowning like Kyle's body, I just hit a point of like, this is bullshit and I will not be dragged into this death swamp any further with you. Like I'm not oh, going I'll tell you anymore. I, Another fight oh, or flight response that I've had uh, when I was like 14 or something. There was a bully that I had an issue with. He was much bigger than me, and like he like he was they like always the are. fight guy. Yeah, like, like yeah. Jim, <laughs> they Jim always, Rome always talks Kyle, about. Kyle, I give you permission to, to beat him up. Yeah, Jim <laughs> Rome always talks about likes to fight guy, this right. douchebag who who's walking around like like a fucking walking boner and just wants to punch something. He was that guy, and and just just much bigger than me. And it wasn't like we had a regular issue, but we had an issue today. And for whatever reason, I said, ah, I'm gonna stand up to you, and I'm like. I shoved him, gave him the double palms in the in the chest, even though it's, his chest is up here. Mm. And it's like, ah, fuck you. I'm not going to take your shit. And he gave me one back, and he's like, I'll kick your ass. But he wasn't completely confident. Like, like I definitely rebuffed him, and he never gave me any more issues after that. But his threat was terrifying because he meant that shit. I had seen him do it. I had seen him beat up three different men, and they were men. <laughs> That he beat up. He would walk up. I saw him one time walk up to this guy who was the biggest fucking guy that was that was the biggest white guy that I knew. And he just he's just smiling. He called him Smiley and he fucking boom just decks the guy. And then he's just like, ha, now we fight. Like, like he just instigates a fight with the big guy. And he's like, now we're gonna roll. Let's go. Like that was his deal. And so his threat meant Asshole. something. And, and he scared the fuck out of me, but I didn't I pretend like I didn't, but I immediately got the worst diarrhea. I was like, I my body has to shit right now. <laughs> Your body so is I hilarious in these situations. <laughs> altercation, walked to the bathroom with no permission. Like we were in like metals, like shop class, so there very little supervision. That's why we were having the altercation. I, I went to the bathroom. I'm, I remember just shitting my ass off at school, which I had. <laughs> it was the only shit I had taken ever in high school. I was like, today we shit at school because it and it was just like when <laughs> the a only zebra, shit you ever took in high school. Yeah, it's the only shit I've ever taken in high school because it's it was so a weird. <laughs> like and, and Joe Rogan has talked about this before. He's like, yeah, he was talking about this video where these two bears are fighting and they're having this life or death battle. These two grizzly bears and they just start one of them just start shitting, <laughs> just shitting, just just shitting everywhere, just explosive diarrhea, <laughs> just shitting because his body is like, we do not have energy to <laughs> energy to spend on digestion. <laughs> Go Get it out into the to the claws or whatever you know, <laughs> and that's exactly what my body was doing. It was like, oh, we about to throw down. 
Time to shit, bro. <laughs> well, it's because you were gonna ink him. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you know, <coughs> the shit to because it would have been a real whooping if he I, decided to take things to that level. I don't get like mm -hmm. if we were to compare Kyle to electricity, <laughs> like where he can sometimes black out. I'm more inclined to brown out, and it, it happened last year on my paramotor. So I'm I'm coming in for a landing, and I think everything's fine. I've flown for like an hour at this point, and. Uh, it's not in, it's at the very end, like maybe I'm 20 feet off the ground. I hop out of my seat. Now I'm suspended by my leg straps and they're buckled up wrong. So really I'm suspended by one leg strap that's much tighter and the other one isn't. And now instead of coming in for landing nice and straight, it's turning me. I'm landing on my side. Everything's all fucked up. And like I'm, um, in the end I land, but I kind of like take a knee and almost fall forward. Maybe I do put my hands on the ground. Everything's fine but just didn't get your achilles though i so. turned it off you know, they, they did turn off so um but I'm, I'm embarrassed that i didn't nail landing and i hate that i, I knew that i had the skill set to handle this problem i just wasn't the best version of me well anyway the turn up my buckle on my leg was routed wrong but i didn't know that i thought that the problem was because it was like caught under the keys in my jeans and just caused it to not hang right so I was like, all right, no problem. Take the keys, put my jacket in pocket and just fly again the next day. Next day, same thing happens, right? Because it wasn't the keys. The buckle was routed wrong. And um, I'm, I'm like, all right, Woody, you said you had the skill set to handle this. You know, you just need to like be asymmetrical on the brakes as you come in and encounter it. Here's your chance. Big shot. Nail this landing. You, it's happened again. And, uh, and I felt really good because I did. And I just needed a little more experience to, to be you know, the, the clear headed best version of me. And that like going into the red or going into the yellow is something that like I kind of actively work on, whether it be like motorcycling or paramotoring or what have you. Um, an area I talked about it in my last video. My friend at uh, the zombie Air Force Base where I sometimes fly brought out a dueling tree for a pistol. Kyle knows this. And uh, mm -hmm. so I get up there and I, I there were, maybe there were six of them, all six of them. I hit them in a row like I'm a big shot. And uh, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a great shot or anything, but sometimes you know, I usually hit what I'm pointing at. And then uh, I'm going against this army guy and he's like, all right, let's like do a competition. And we lay out the rules for the dueling tree that we made up. And uh, he's like, I'll go one handed and you, know, you can do whatever. Oh, my God. I couldn't hit shit. I couldn't hit a fucking thing. Now that I'm in competition against another guy and there's like stress and like if I had done what I did in practice, I would have, that would have beat him handily, I think. But uh, um, yeah, oh, that's absolutely true. That's true with it. Like, like I've, uh, that, that my, my shotgun suppressor, like I remember mm -hmm. we were in that field and I'm, I'm out there throwing three, three skeet up, choop, 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 getting them. And I'm like, all right, we're ready to film. I'm tuned in. Right. I couldn't hit fucking shit. I can't. I do. And, and the thing about it is, like, when you've got with that shotgun with the suppressor on the end, it's so heavy. Mm -hmm. the, and the, the, there's a there's a motion to like throwing the skeet and shooting them, where I'm holding the gun. Right. And I throw them, and then I, I let the gun fall down, and then I sort of catch it with my left hand as it's recovering from the throw and go. And so there's this repeated movement like this with your left hand of of catching a heavy gun and and lifting it upwards, and then being steady and immediately going into a stance that's that I had done 80 fucking times in a row. And I'm just like, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. But like, too I, much I, practice. I, I couldn't fucking calm down. And that thing, was so, it's so hard to shoot with that. Yeah. On it. You can't and, get a, your sight range is weird. So when I see these people miss an actual combat, I think, Woody, if you're half the shot in competition that you are in practice, are you a quarter of the shot, you know, in against bad guys? Like I can see, like sometimes I see guys, uh, I saw a video, two people on either side of a pool table. They both had like seven rounds in their gun. No one hit each other. They're just ducking and popping up like uh, opposite a pool table. Yeah. You would like, how do you miss someone from four feet? But sure enough, they managed to miss like seven times. Both of them ran out of bullets. I knew someone who had gotten in a gunfight uh, outside a bar and uh, the bullets <coughs> in his car. Uh, they were shooting into his car at them. They were just feet away, and he was returning fire out the window. And the bullets, the windows were rolled down in the in the truck, and the bullets were coming through the door and shattering the glass and making it spray up and out 
You know, he, he, right. he's just like that. He's just like the glass was fucking spraying everywhere. And like, I couldn't see anything. I was just emptying the fucking clip and, and it, like nobody hit anybody. Like they both just fucking empty their clip and he, and then he just sped away and like, they just called it even. <laughs> it was even <laughs> lived to fight another day. Right. He's got yeah. some body work to do. The other guy <laughs> probably needs to buy some new pants. Like <laughs> I, uh, but yeah, so I, I, that, concept of like going into the yellow or going into the red like that's i don't know somehow the fight or flight thing sparked that in me yeah that shit sucks i hate i hate having this <coughs> um i um i kind of enjoy working against it you know now you know i don't want to have repeated gunfights but like the other stuff like the motorcycle the paramotor and like sometimes i go to a motorcycle turn and i'm like all right this is a little faster than your comfort zone but you know what to do. You know, look where you intend to go. Take your turn smoothly. Use proper throttle control. And your bike can do a lot more than you think it can. And I love those moments when fear makes time slow down a little bit. <laughs> and you get to be that super version of you for, for like a split <laughs> second. Are you, have you had this? Like, like where the adrenaline it makes, makes your perception of time seem to slow just a little bit? I'm Happen not all the sure. Time going. Hmm. Where you feel like the puck's coming way slower than it is. And then yeah. you watch like a, a game tape replay. And it's like... That shot only took a tenth of a second to get there, but it feels like you're like, I'm moving all my stuff correctly. It's almost like you're focused on so much stuff that mm. it slows it down. Like the focus. Yeah. That, yeah. Your, your, per your perception of time completely yeah. changes. Like, like, like in that moment with all that adrenaline, your, your brain is focused on that one thing and, and everything slows down just a little bit so you can be a little bit better version of you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if what you're is in the DMV and they shoot a puck at you, you're just going to get hit because you're not, you're not ready. Your adrenaline is very low. Yeah. At the DMV. I, I wonder I, like, like, like what kind of performance enhancer adrenaline is because, you know, it's always used to, cure, you know, fix a bee sting, allergic reactions and stuff like that, you know, but, but, but is there anyone like, like who's ever used it as, as a, as a, a performance enhancing drug of some kind? Right. Like, like, like they is just, that not a, between rounds two and three in the octagon, they just like pop it in your leg and oh. see what you got. Or if it, you had like really, a really short term though, isn't it? Like okay, with okay. With the drive, let's do this. You'd have to knock him out in like ten seconds. Or, or I don't even know how long it would last. But I have no idea. Let's say it's 10, 20 seconds, right? There are races that go that long. Twenty seconds is a fifty meter free in, in swimming, and it's two hundred meters in uh in track and field. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe adrenaline it makes, makes, your, you makes your like makes shaky. Your... Mm. Oh. I lost. You got roboty there for a sec. Oh, I, I, I was saying. Seems I wonder fine. if it makes you like like shaky, or if it makes you not as coordinated or something. Where like you have more raw power diverted to the limbs, but they're not quite as coordinated. Maybe I don't your muscles know. burn out faster or, or something like that. Who knows? I, I, I bought those canisters of air the other of oxygen the other day to <laughs> to sort of test their performance enhancing abilities. I've been uh, I've been testing to see if I can hold my breath longer with them and uh, doing like 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 not like and powerlifting. You? Yes. I, I think I can, but it could be a placebo. <laughs> well, just like, like 95% can of oxygen, right? So like, like, like I'll just, I'll take like a bunch of deep breaths from it and then hold the last one. And it feels, I could be wrong. It could be a placebo, but it feels like, oh, this my when usually when I hold my breath and I start like running out of breath, it, it, it starts as like a, it feels hot right here in the You're center burning. of your chest. Yeah. And that burning kind of flows outward from the center. And that burning starts off at more cool, it feels like, to me, in maybe my placebo mind, or maybe because oxygen how, really does. How, uh, how long can you hold your breath just standard-ish? Like I didn't, I haven't done we it recently. We did this a yeah, long time Yeah, there was a whole ago. controversy, because, because you didn't like the way I held my nose or something like that. He was like, like I'm this. holding my breath. Like <laughs> well, I... I I, it's this is like do I have to do this the whole time? Yes. Like, like like do I have to like? You need to do it underwater. Well, just any solution that underwater. shows that your mouth. Is if it's not underwater, it's bullshit. When I get underwater though, my my heart rate goes up. I I, I, I to me that's the only way to do a breath check thing because even you could just hold it, and I feel like there's a natural flow, whatever the current in the room is, that's giving you something that water doesn't. Like by osmosis. Like you're just, getting just like there's some flow. Maybe you're taking micro it's, breaths. I don't know. 